Okay, we're back. And what I'm going to do is turn off elastic audio on this guitar track, and I'll be prompted with a message. I'm going to go to none here, asking me if I want to commit the stretching that's been done or if I want to have it revert to the original. And I'm going to commit, and we'll have a new audio file now that's set at this length. So I'll play it again for you, and you'll hear that it fits, it works, they're the same tempo, but they're not exactly the same groove. It's not terrible, but not great. Now there's lots of techniques for groove matching, and we're going to look at one of them in this video involving Beat Detective. Now what I'm going to do is analyze the drum file for the groove feel, and then apply it to the guitar so that the guitar will follow the drum groove. So let's start by going under the event menu and calling up Beat Detective, and the shortcut is Command-8. And this is a complex tool that does lots of things, and we'll look at them throughout the videos as we explore working with loops. But for now, let's look at what we need to do. With this drum groove selected, what I want to do is extract the groove from it. So I'm going to choose Groove Template Extraction and make sure that I'm working with audio here and not MIDI. And what I'm going to do now is capture the selection and it's just captured what I have selected here. It's a four bar loop starting at bar one, ending at the downbeat of bar five. Now I wanna perform a detection and what it's gonna do kind of like Elastic Audio, it detects the transients in the file and it generates what are called beat triggers rather than the event markers that we looked at with Elastic Audio. So under detection, I'm gonna leave it at normal. Collection mode is great for when we're collecting and assembling beat triggers from multiple files, like it's great for multi-track drum recordings, for example. But for now, I'm going to leave it in normal mode. And I'm going to leave it at enhanced resolution as opposed to high and low emphasis. If I had, let's say, just a hi-hat part or just a bass guitar or kick drum part, I could use those. But I'm going to leave it at enhanced resolution. And I'm going to click Analyze. And we'll see a sensitivity slider. And it's kind of like the threshold for elastic audio events that we saw in the elastic properties window. We dial it up and we'll see that the beat triggers are being generated now. And what we can do is go in and refine the analysis of the beat triggers by adding or moving as necessary. And we can show trigger times if we want to see what clock ticks they fall on. I'm going to leave that off for now, but let's leave this up. It doesn't seem to be adding too many beat triggers after about there. And let's zoom in. And what I'm going to do is scroll to each one and let's make sure that we have the beat triggers where we want them. Like for example, I see an erroneous one right here. So what I'm gonna do is option click and I'll get the little minus sign, click on that and it'll get rid of it. This one is off, so let's move it over here. And let's continue, scroll next. So far, these are all good. Here's an erroneous one again. I'll hit option and get rid of that one. Scroll next, I'm just eyeballing these real quick and seeing that they fall right where the transients are. They're looking good. This isn't too laborious to do in a loop because usually loops are only four bars here. This is a little bit late. They're usually only a couple of bars, one, two, four, or eight bars. It's not like you're gonna have to do 10 minutes of audio. And let's continue. So far, so good. And it looks like it's a bit early. Let me zoom a little bit more. No, oh, it's pretty good. Here, let's move this one back. The closer you get this analysis, the better it's gonna work when we apply them. It's the one that was a bit early. There we go. And let's go scroll next. And you can option click on that to scroll back. So you don't need to move the mouse over. But that's looking good. Looking good. Here's one that it's missed. So let's hold down the control key and we'll add one. There we go. And we should be near the end now. All looking good. And there we go, we're at the end. So now with that done, I'm gonna go extract. And of course I use subbeats here because I wanna get all the little 16th notes and nuances. So let's go extract. And I have the option of saving this to disk if I wanna save it as a permanent groove template, or I can just save it to the clipboard, which I'll do for now. And I'll put a little comment in here. EK groove extraction loops explain just so we can see it. And let's go save to clipboard. All right, now with that done, let's go back to the beginning and we'll select the guitar part that we have here and let's go capture selection. We wanna work on this. This is only two bars. So we see it ends at the downbeat of bar three. And for here, we wanna separate the clips. So let's go clip separation. All right, we've captured the selection. Let's go analyze. And now let's 
explore this. I can see the first one already is a little bit late. Let's move it back. Oh, lost him there. There we go. Let's... There we go. Got to grab it there and move it back right to the beginning. That one's looking good. Let's go scroll next here. Let's put this up higher. This one seems to be a little bit late. Got to grab right in the exact spot. There, you can see it moving there. There we go. It looks good. Scroll next. This one seems to be early. Let's put it right near where that transient is. Right around there. Scroll next. This one's a little early. And it detects these based on the rough approximation you set here, which is 16th notes. And this had a bit of a swing feel to it, and that's why it's a little bit off. Let's go here and met that one a bit later. So it's good that we're going through these. We'll really get the feel captured more accurately. Here's an extra one we don't need. There's option. We'll get rid of it. This one's early. Let's move that a bit later. Scroll next. We should be pretty close to done. This is only a two-bar loop. Let's move that a bit later. There we go. Scroll next. And we're done. So now I'm going to hit separate, and it's going to separate these into separate clips, all on the transients that have been detected or the beat triggers that have been detected. So now with that selected, and I'll leave this up here, what I'm going to do now is go clip conform. So I want to conform these clips to the groove that I extracted from the drum groove. So I have two options for conform. I can use standard, which allows me to conform it to, it's kind of like quantizing, to standard grid like 16th notes or 8th notes. But instead, I'm going to go groove because I want to conform it to that groove template. So let's select the groove clipboard. And just to make sure I have the one I think I have, let's go into show info. There's my name and notes, EK Groove Extraction Loops Explained. And let's go to timing. And we can you know, adjust the strength to plus or minus where we want, but I'll leave it at 100% for now. And let's go conform. And there we see it's snapped a little bit. So let's listen to it now. So it's changed the feel of the groove slightly, but it's much more locked in with the drums. There's a little bit of a gap here. There's lots of ways in dealing with that. I don't actually mind it for this kind of percussive, funky electric guitar part. It works nicely. But here we go, having this conform to the groove from this drum groove. So there you go. There's a little Beat Detective 101 on how to get the feel of one loop and apply it to another. See you for more in the next video.